Okay, time for our first confounding example. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and say we have, uh, let's go ahead and say we've got some sort of heart transplant. This is our treatment. Uh, our outcome of interest will be the, um, let's go with survival time afterwards. I'm gonna go ahead and say there's no causal effect between a heart transplant and, and survival afterwards. This is a, a good way of sort of figuring out whether there's some sort of association between the two, because if there is association and the lack of a causal effect, you know that you've not achieved exchangeability. Okay, let's say that uh, the treatment uh, is influenced by some unmeasured cofounder one. So this treatment is measured uh, is, um, so people are more likely to get treated if they, if they are, uh, under this unmeasured co-founder. And you might say that this, this unmeasured co-founder um, might be some sort of uh, infection or something. Not, not infection. Let's, let's go ahead and, and say that this is like symptoms, like pain or something like that. Um, so if the, if the patient is more likely to be in pain, they'll, they'll be more likely to ask for treatment. Uh, let's say that this unmeasured co-founder is also uh, likely to influence some measured uh, a variable here, and this measured variable might be um, a patient survey in the beginning. Okay, let's say we have one more unmeasured co-founder, um, and this this is going to be uh, a patient's uh, whether they have an infection or something like this. Uh, the infection, of course, will influence the outcome. So the pain, obviously, well, pain maybe not so obviously, but the pain might not influence the outcome. So it might not influence survival time versus an infection would. Uh, and this infection, I'm going to go ahead and say it influences the patient's um, uh, survey uh, because they might feel like they have some sort of temperature, okay? Um, so we've got these two things. Uh, we've got pain, which leads to, uh, which leads to uh, heavy fever. We've got uh, infection that leads to heavy fever. We've got infection that leads to uh, lower survival time. And we have pain that leads to um, uh, going in and getting treatment. Okay, so my question to you is, do we have confounding? Um, so I think the easy way to sort of write this out, at least for me, is I go ahead and I write this out all in a line. So I go ahead and I say A uh, is influenced by some U1. Uh, U1 is going to go ahead and influence some sort of L. Okay, uh, L is also influenced by U2. And then finally, U2 influences uh, Y. Okay, and we traverse the path. Okay, so this is totally fine. Uh, totally fine, totally fine. And then boom, we hit a collider. Two arrows point towards the same value. So L in this case is the collider. Um, what a lot of people will tend to do, so, so question to you, uh, is A associated with Y? The answer, no. Uh, there's a collider in the middle. L is this collider in the middle. Uh, so because we have L and we're not conditioning upon L, uh, we can go ahead and say that A is not associated with Y. Now, what, what people tend to like to do is they like to you know, measure things, everything that they measure, they would like to condition upon. So let's say we conditioned upon L. Let's say we conditioned upon L. Now, are A and Y associated? Yes, we have in fact opened a back door. Uh, and this back door is, is, is so special, it actually has a name. We call this M bias. We call this M bias. You wanna take a guess, why? Uh, well, this, this kind of like causal diagram up here kind of looks like a sideways M. So, so this is confounding example one. Um, again, we can do this with lots and lots of complicated diagrams and we'll go ahead and continue to do this with more complicated diagrams as we go 